What's your favorite Rajni Khan film? So, can I say it's a Hindi film? Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know that that would defeat the purpose of your question. But I remember watching Chal Baz in a packed theatre in a single screen. I just burst out laughing every time he appeared on screen. And when she says, I Madira not drink Madhira to him, and the way he reacted to that, I became an instant Rajnikanth fan. Subsequently, of course, I remember me and Aditya Chopra going for one when we went and saw Sivaji together. And uh, it was in again in a packed hall. It was uh, in, in the theatres that they used to play the southern films in. And I just wanted to feel that mania. So we both went like just to see what happens. And I don't think I've ever seen this kind of an audience explosion. And when I mean, it was literally an explosion. <laughs> like I thought people were, go I thought there was going to be a stampede. And this was in Mumbai. In I mean, I've seen the most, the biggest stars, you know, make introductions, but it was nothing like this. And so of course I loved everything after then. I loved him in Robot, when, which happened with Shankar. But I think my first memory of being absolutely in love with him is when I saw Chal Baz. Chal Baz. Yeah. I want to talk about non-Hindi cinema basically. Yeah. Mint reported that non-Hindi cinema contributed to 22% of the exhibition change cine policies review in 2017. Right. Um, it was just 5% in 2005. What do you think changed in the interim? Awareness. Okay. Just awareness through uh, social media, the internet. I think every passing year, you'll start seeing uh, that the world is becoming a tighter spot. You know, it's becoming a closer unit. Uh, so I think that everything, if a film is well reviewed, in, I'm, I mean, I'm a filmmaker, so of course it's my job to track what's happening everywhere in the world. But even audiences, like, you know, when we, that's what happened with Bahubali as well. It's just that one starts hearing, even living in the north, what's happening in the south. You know, what's happening because there are fan clubs and there are digital uploads and updates. Instagram, Twitter is talking. You keep like everybody now suddenly in my office the other day was talking, Are, what is this film coming out? Uh, you know, this big Tamil film that is releasing called Sarkar. And everyone's talking about like, I believe it was the most trending unit. It was the most number one unit on YouTube. It had the maximum number of views. Now everyone sitting in an office in Andheri in Mumbai is talking about a film made out of Chennai called Sarkar with a superstar there. That means suddenly the world is becoming one. This country, we all talk about Barry, we talk about crossover films. I'm like, actually the main crossover is North to South and vice versa. So actually I would consider the biggest crossover success to be Bahubali because right. it really crossed over. Because normally when we cross, it's all over. Like, you know, we never work here and we cross and then nothing happens there, right. you know? And like, you know, we're just waiting that, oh, we'll get an Oscar nomination. Oh, we might get an Academy Award nomination. But actually Bahubali is a victory of crossover. The concept of crossover first needs to happen internally. You mentioned Bahubali. Uh, there have been uh, southern hits before, like yeah. Apuraja was a right. really huge hit when it was released, and Robot was a was a yeah. decent sized hit. Yeah. But none of these movies made this kind of crossover. They were they were all seen as one offs. Yeah. You know, this odd film would come from south, and then it would become a big hit in a dubbed version or something, yeah. and then nothing would happen. Why 2000? Why did it take up to 2015 and the first Bahubali film for this? The explosion to really happen? Because up to that point, there was nothing like this. You must understand when emotions are universal, storytelling is universal, whether it's made in the north or south, that is immaterial. But, and I would say this, you know, with a great amount of assurance, this may not happen time and again, again. Right. You know, it's going to happen with the big event films, not the high concept films. The high concept films will work in their own region. Like if you take a Badhai Ho, dub it into Tamil and Telugu, it may not work. And if you take a high concept Tamil or Telugu film and dub it into Hindi, it will not work. But when I saw the rushes of Bahubali, I said, this is the biggest motion picture made in India. And when they came to us to present it, I said, how do I make this engaging to a national audience? And the one thing that I could say is the biggest film made in India. Okay. That was the, if you see, that was how we opened the biggest motion picture made in India, period. It was true. There was nothing big up to that point in terms of scale, vision, you know, technology. It was out there. So that was the trigger to sell. So whether you're sitting in Delhi or you're sitting in Kanyakumari, you're going to react, Are, this is the biggest Indian film. What, even if you don't see it on day one, you know of it. Right. You've heard, right. there is a film that is big. Now, I think Raju Mali sir had a problem. He did not have, enjoy the process, I think, of what happened with Iga. You know, he remember telling me that I had done all of one crore, which according to me, if I had distributed that film, I would have said, a fly takes revenge. Right. You know, I'm like, who thinks of that? You know, who thinks that a film can be made about a fly? That, that can be sold because that is such a high, high, high concept that you can really sell it. So I think the reason why the film in 2015 and, and, uh, and then 2017 worked the way they did is because nothing was of that scale up to that point. Now the next big opener, film made in Telugu and Tamil, will be 2.0. 
again because of its sheer and also it has Akshay Kumar in it right. but also for sheer scale we in India if you, in Hindi cinema actually up to that point were through the 90s very we made love stories then we did the high concept films that were working the commercial films then the Salman Khan mania came over right. and you know then the, which were actually ironically many of them were remakes of Telugu films as well up to that point besides Sanjay Leela Bansali we were not making the big event films very few and far between. Ram Leela was not really, but it was Rajira Mastani was and then Padmavar. Right. Two films made over so many years, obviously that we are not used to seeing that kind of magnitude. Now suddenly we've realized, including myself, because I'm a great one for joining the bandwagon. <laughs> uh, you know, I feel like we're all jumping the bandwagon of big event. So now every big event film has come. There's Thugs of Hindustan, is, is, uh, there are about five period films being made, including mine. All this is actually a great spin-off of Bahubali. Bahubali told us that scale, vision to get you have to give and that means you have to give to an audience if you want to get the footfalls and that's what's happened with Bahubali. Eventually when that promo was all of a 30 second unit I remember but nobody had seen a waterfall that looked like this. Nobody had seen so many crowds in a frame. They were like what the hell is going on? Is this a feature film made in India? Because up to that point we only associated technology, scale and vision with films made out of Hollywood. Right. You know we had never seen that so that's how Bahubali broke through and see part one was the litmus test. Right. Part two was the job was done. Because then after that, subsequently, it did so well on satellite that you knew that part two was going to take the most thunderous start. And right now, I have to say, and it's not something that we in Hindi cinema should be proud of, but the biggest Hindi film is a film made in Telugu. Right. The biggest business in the Hindi circuits is, is 510 crores plus. And the difference between that and the next hit is about 150 crores. Right. That means we've got that kind of a gap. Nobody's bridged that gap as yet. And I'm like, that's been made by people who didn't even plan to make this for, for our right. audience, you know? So I mean, like, it's a very beautiful, creative slap on our faces. Okay. You know, and I think it needs for us to really wake up and smell the coffee. Okay. That there is a whole audience there who are hungry for content meets technology and scale. And I think the great thing about Rajamoli is that he blends narrative you know, emotional narrative with scale and opulence. Right. Like throughout in Bahubali, you care for the characters. You laugh and cry with them. You're invested in, when the revenge is taken, you feel that revenge, you feel the thump. You know, he also ended the part one with the possibly the most genius last moment a film has had since Sixth Sense. <laughs> I mean, I think like after Sixth Sense, if I saw something, the end went, oh, what? Everybody went like that, <laughs> like, what <laughs> happened? Like I saw, I was watching and I just looked around and there was just like, and no matter what their journey was while watching the film, the end they were sold. They were like, why did Katappa kill Bahubali? And it became like the second most important question in the country. The first being like political ones, which we won't get into. <laughs>